Hello to you all, my precious family. It has been a while since the last message, but I have been sick and have finally recovered. The Lord put some of the community members here through a short trial and even suffering for the world as things are ramping up and this could be the start of World War III. The Lord has been asking us all to seriously fast and pray for America especially New York, or should I say modern-day Nineveh. As of now, we've started a seven-day fast on rice and water to pray and intercede for mercy and asking the Lord to extend more time or mitigate the damage that will be done there. Dearest family, these souls really, really, really need your prayers and offerings. Offer what you can, and you are even welcome to join us in this fast. Me and the brothers here decided to offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass and our prayers for them. But there is strength in numbers, dear ones. Now is the time to perform works of mercy by praying for those who we know truly need it. What if you were the ones lost, having no clue what was heading your way? Wouldn't you want someone praying for you nonstop? Well, dear ones, those who show mercy shall themselves be shown mercy. We shall all be judged by the measuring stick of love and mercy. God acts towards us as we act toward our neighbor. And if you don't know what I mean by that, read the parable of the unmerciful servant. However, The message I got for you all is not about this. Rather, Jesus approached a different subject. Yet I am telling you these things so that you will join us in praying for the world, dear ones. And just as an aside, for those of you who don't know what is going on in New York, uh, dear sister had a dream that um, uh, evil enemies were planning a dirty bomb in New York to start as a false flag for World War III. They were going to plant the bomb, have it blow up, and then blame it on our enemies as in a way as in a way for America to start World War III. And as I told you guys before, I even had a dream years ago that New York would be bombed as judgment for abortion because of all the evil of abortion. And not only that, but also the evil acts that are being planned against it. And that is why the Lord wants us to pray for New York because it will soon be destroyed. And this cannot be averted, but it can be forestalled or mitigated by our prayers. So it's all up to us, dear ones. That is why the Lord is asking us to really, really pray. But back to the message. So after Mass, I decided to get some more rice to eat and then sit with Jesus in the in the Blessed Sacrament. I longed to hear a word from him, and I also wanted him to speak to you guys so that you could have some encouragement and didn't feel abandoned. Also, I really need your prayers, guys. I have no idea what it's like to run a ministry, and I certainly am not always faithful in my duties. I can procrastinate a lot and be very, very lazy, but the Lord has called me to do this. So here I am, and I really need a lot of grace. I don't really consider myself a shepherd, but this is what the Lord is raising me up to be. And every soul who comes to this channel, I want to make sure they are fed directly from Jesus himself, heart to heart, just like the channel's name. So if you guys could pray for me for that, I'd really appreciate it. I don't want to waste my talents and gifts and neglect you guys any longer. And please forgive me for that. But like I said, going back to the message, I said to Jesus uh, in the Blessed Sacrament as I was thinking about you guys, My Jesus, we need to hear from you. Your bride needs to hear from you. Lord, give us wisdom from your heart, O God. Longing for this and not really hearing anything 
Not knowing what was on his heart, I picked up a book called The Imitation of Mary, asking for a rhema, and it was about persistence in prayer. I read it for a little while, and then Jesus began. I would like to talk about persistence, especially in prayer. My children, my brides, you give up way too easily in your prayers and stop even at the least resistance. This isn't an attribute of those who wish to become saints and have their prayers heard on high by my Father. No, rather you must press in, even if it's a long, dry desert with not a drink of water in sight. I know you are weary in well-doing, but I tell you, your endurance will be all the more rewarded if you cease to give up now at such a critical moment. Let me say to you, my beloved ones, not one prayer is wasted, not one tear shed goes unnoticed, not one suffering or anguish moan goes unheard. I hear and see it all, beloved ones, and I am with you even in your darkest moments. It is because at these It is because it is at these moments that the evil one seeks to tempt you with doubt and lack of trust in me, that I am not faithful to my word, that I have abandoned you and will not help you. Nothing could be further from the truth, my brides. I share everything with you, and it hurts me to see your moans and cries of anguish. However, there is a bigger picture you do not see. If I seem to have not answered your request, it is either because I am growing you in perseverance and faith and patience. I also use your sufferings and prayers and spread them around so that graces are distributed to those who are in need of them the most. You must also consider if what you ask is in accordance with my will for you, which is always for your good and benefit. Oh, there is so much you do not see, my bride, but it shall all be revealed to you in heaven. I know the fervency and perseverance you are all truly capable of, and if you are seeking my fellowship and presence, let me make one thing clear. I am not an easy catch. It is my royal dignity that does not allow me to be an easy catch. Yet I am available, and I offer this friendship to all who are willing to seek me until they find me. Do you want to know those who are not worthy of me? Those who are not willing to pursue me until they find me, until they catch me. I am not telling this to shame you, my brides, but only to exhort you. You must press in. I shall surprise you with my presence, dear ones. And then the scripture of Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 8 came to mind. Suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And the friend answers from inside, Do not bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up now to give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give it to him because of their friendship, he will get up and give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. Jesus continued, This is the posture you must take, beloved ones. You must simply not take no for an answer in your prayers. Those who take this to heart and apply themselves, I shall surely bless with my fellowship and love. I show no partiality. I love you all the same, and I desire you all to be with me. Part of the problem is that you don't truly believe I desire your company. My dearest ones, Do you think I suffered the most extreme torments in my passion just to leave you alone in this world? Don't you know 
I want to be intimately involved in every area of your life. I desire friendship, not rules and regulations. This was my problem with the Pharisees. Oh, how my father and I are so misunderstood. We created you for the joy of fellowship with you. We never intended for you to bear the burdens of this life alone, nor is it our wish that you suffer much, but because of the corrupted hearts of greedy men cooperating with the enemy, suffering is dominant in the world. But take heart, my children. I shall soon return and restore all things, bringing freedom to the oppressed, love and acceptance to the outcast, truth to the ignorant, and God to the forsaken. All men and women shall know me as I truly am, meek, gentle, and kind, and together we shall live life the way it was meant to be. I bless you all now, my beloved dear ones, with an enduring heart and the grace to persevere in your prayers. You haven't much long to be here. Make your mark and show others who I truly am through you. Go out of your way for the poor and the unloved. Be my hands and feet to them. Share my love with the hurting and abandoned. Sharing your experiences and what I've done for you. Be a light to all the world by your kindness and meekness. For all men shall know you are my disciples by the love not only that you have for one another, but also for your enemies. I shall soon return to take you, my beloved ones, to myself. Be at peace now. I am with you. And that was the end of the Lord Jesus' message. And that was a beautiful, wonderful message. And once again, guys, I ask you all for your prayers. Pray for me that I will be faithful and diligent in seeking the Lord every day for a message for you guys. And also to bring you guys teachings to help you grow more in holiness and in likeness to the Lord. And also the things that we do and say or think that keep us from having this intimate relationship with Him. Until then, God bless you all guys. I love you and the Lord be with you and bless you with His sweet presence and his love and please keep one another in your prayers especially new york